Welcome to today's Software AG webcast titled, Sync Your Mainframe Data to the Cloud for Insights. Today's webcast will be presented by Harpal Gill, Vice President of the Connects Group, and Bill Luton, Director of R&D of the Connects Group within Software AG. As we move through today's presentation, we invite and encourage you to submit any questions that you may have via the Q&A box, which is located on the bottom center of your webcast dashboard. We will address your questions at the end of today's program. In the event that we're not able to answer your question, your submission will be noted, and today's presenters will be back in touch with you as soon as possible. Today's presentation is being recorded. This program recording will be made available to you in an email that will be sent to you within approximately 24 hours. Additionally, this webcast recording will be posted to the database and natural playlist on the Software AG YouTube channel later today. With that, it is now my pleasure to welcome Harpal Gill. Thank you, Will. And good morning, everyone, to the folks on the West Coast, and good afternoon to the rest of the country. As Bill, Will mentioned, my name is Harpal Gill, and I'm the VP of the Connects Group, and I'm joined by my colleague, Bill Luton, um, Director of R&D, also within the Connects Group at Software AG. For today's agenda, I will be sharing a little bit about the mainframe in today's world. I'll then share a little bit about a data and cloud challenge. We'll Bill will take us on a demo of our solution to the data and cloud challenge, and then I'll wrap up with a little bit around the products that we saw, and I'll open it up to Q&A. So I actually took this uh, quote off the website, that, of the IBM website, and I wanted to share a couple of data points to point out uh, the challenges that we see. But in today's world, since 1964, forward-thinking organizations have leveraged the power of IBM mainframes to build greater business value reduce cost, and create competitive advantage. In fact, 92 of the world's top 100 banks, 23 of the 25 top US retailers, and nine of the 10 of the world's largest insurance companies run Z Systems. 71% of the global Fortune 500 companies are Z Systems clients, and nine of the top 10 global life and health insurance providers process their high volume transactions on a Z Systems mainframe. Today's mainframes process near roughly 30 billion transactions per day, including most major credit card transactions and stock trades, money transfers, manufacturing processes, and ERP systems. It's estimated that over 80% of the world's corporate data resides or originates on mainframes. So that brings me to the data and cloud challenge. In today's world of self-service, one needs to be able to support all devices. Today's business users are, users are demanding the latest BI and analytical tools. So how can we easily access data on the mainframe with BI and analytical tools on various devices, from PCs to mobile devices and more? Also, businesses want to leverage all of their enterprise data to drive business insights. Organizations are replicating enterprise data to data lakes in the cloud. That brings me to the question, how do we easily move data from the mainframe to a cloud data lake? Well, the answer is Software AG's Connect Solutions from the mainframe. Connect Solutions is a product that encompasses everything from data access, data visualization, data virtualization, and ETL. In fact, the data access component gives you access to the mainframe and over 150 different data sources and platforms and resolves that or provides standard connectivity methods out to various um, desktop, cloud, and mobile applications via ODBC, JDBC, .NET, or LADB. The data visualization will allow you to take data from the mainframe or any of the 150 plus data sources to any dashboarding, reporting, or business intelligence tool of your choice. Data virtualization is a step further where we take data from multiple platforms. So perhaps you have something on the mainframe, something in the cloud, and something on-premise, and you want to virtualize those into a single view. and then run dashboards, um, various reporting solutions, or business intelligence off those. And finally, data movement, or ETL. We, we support data movement from the mainframe or, again, over 150 different data sources to a variety of on-premise or cloud solutions. So for the demo, Bill's going to take us on a tour and show us how we do data access to the mainframe, data visualization from the mainframe, data movement of data from the mainframe to the cloud, and then finally, cloud and mainframe data virtualization. So Bill, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you, Harpal. 
So for my demo today, I'm going to be showing data, uh, data access, data visualization, virtualization, and data movement from two different platforms. The first platform will be the mainframe where I have some vSEM files, and I'll be moving that data to an Azure database in the cloud. So on the mainframe side, I've got my terminal emulator up here, and I just wanted to show you that I've got some vSAM files that we're gonna be using, and the customers and the orders files are gonna be the ones that we'll be paying the most attention to. And these are vSAM files that are on the mainframe. And before we get started, I want to show you our Connects Data Dictionary Manager. Now the Connects Data Dictionary is a component that's at the heart of the Connects solution. What it is, is it's a metadata repository where we store all the connection information that we need to get to our various backend databases, as well as the metadata for the uh, files or relational tables that we want to access. So in the case of the vSAM, um, I've already imported the COBOL copybooks into my data dictionary, and I'm going to just look at one of the tables here. So I've got my customer's table, and here it tells me the exact physical location on the mainframe where the customer resides. And then I also have, uh, for each file, I've got them represented as if they are relational tables. And so I have my column names, my data types, uh, lengths and offsets, so that the Connects tool will know how to find the data inside of that vSAM record. And then we also can uh, hold information about uh, indexes. So these are KSDS files and I've got indexes on them. In addition to my vSAM, uh, entry in my CDD. I also have uh, the information to know how to connect to the uh, Azure database that's in the cloud. And I have some tables that I've imported here. And you'll see they look exactly the same as what was in the vSAM file for this demo. So the first thing that I'm going to do as part of my demo is I'm going to use a, uh, a desktop query and reporting tool that comes with the Connects product. This is a .NET application called Infonaut. And we're going to connect, and we're going to connect to that CDD. And as soon as I do this, the uh, connects tool has gone to the, the uh, data connections that are in the CDD and actually established connections. So we now actually have a connection to a server component that's running on the mainframe, as well as we have a connection to the Azure cloud. Now the server component on the mainframe is used because when we send SQL queries out uh, down to it, its, its job is to then uh, disseminate the, or, or, or dissect those queries and convert them to the low level vSAM IO calls, collect all the data and send it back. And so we're gonna just do that real quick. Um, what I'm gonna do here is what we call data visualization. And so I'm gonna do a SQL query uh, against the vSAM file that I called customers. And we're gonna execute this, and this just brought in all the data from that vSAM file as if it were a relational table. And uh, it's brought it into a, a like I said, a .NET um, desktop, and we're using the .NET data provider to do that. Now I'm gonna do something a little bit more interesting, and I'm gonna execute our query builder tool now this tool allows me if I'm going to build a, if I want to do a query that, and maybe I don't know SQL real well, and I want to do a query that's a little bit more involved, this gives us a visual way to build our queries. And I'm going to now demonstrate something that we call data virtualization. And so I'm going to actually build a query that does a join between two of my vSAM files and virtualizes them into a single table that it will present on my desktop application. So I have my customers table that was brought in because I already had a select star from customers query on my workspace. And I'm gonna tell it now that I want to bring in my orders table from my mainframe. So I'm gonna drop that on my workspace. And I'm gonna tell it that I want to join these two files um, against their customer ID. So I'm treating them now as if this were a relational database and that these were relational tables, even though they're actually flat file vSAM files. So I've created the join and you can see down here, it's actually building my query for me. And now let's select some columns. So I'm gonna say I want customer ID, let's take the customer name, address, city, state, and zip. And on the order side, we'll take the order ID, the product ID, and we'll take the product quantity. Now, one other thing that I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and I wanna order this so that they always come up in the same order. So I'm gonna order it on the customer ID field and you'll see that it actually put the order ID down here for me. Now, when I click done, 
it brings that whole query that we just built visually into my workspace so I don't have to actually type it out. And now when I hit ex uh, execute, what, we what the tool did now is it actually went to both the customer uh, vSAM file as well as the order vSAM file and it did a join and brought them back as a single virtualized table into my desktop query tool. And my tool here doesn't actually know that this is uh, vSAM data. It thinks, it, for all it knows, is it's just another relational database somewhere. So that's an example of data visualization as well as virtualization. Now let's look at data movement. So we have a tool called DataSync and that takes care of uh, moving data between platforms and it'll move data from any of our 150 plus supported uh, databases to any of our 150 plus supported databases. And in this case, we're gonna move data from uh, vSAM, which I have in, in my list here, and we're gonna go to the Azure database um, as our target. So, what this tool will do is it actually has a couple different modes that it runs in. And the first mode that I'm gonna show you is just a basic extract and load. And what I mean by that is we're gonna simply take all the records out of the uh, source table and we're gonna copy them to the target table. Um, in addition to doing them all at once, then once we've done that, we can also uh, analyze the source and we can do change data capture where we're only moving any changes that we made. And I'm gonna show you both of those. So we're gonna pretend that this is the first time that these syncs have been set up. Obviously you can see I've done them before. Um, and in a tool like this, in a production environment, you would normally run your synchronizations on a schedule. So you might wanna run them once an hour, once a day, depending on your business needs, you know, whatever frequency you want. But we do also have the ability to run them on demand, which I'm gonna do now uh, for, for the demonstration. And the first thing I'm gonna do because uh, we're going to pretend this is their brand new uh, synchronizations, is we're going to do a full reload. So what's going to happen now is the tool will go out to the target and it'll actually drop and recreate the table so that it's clean. And then it moved all the data from all the source vSAM files up to the Azure database so that now the tables in the Azure database are completely in sync with the vSAM files. So let's bring up our Infonaut tool again and actually go look at the, uh, well, I'll look first at the customer's file to just refresh uh, everyone's memory on the vSAM, what it looked like. Uh, and we've got the always open quick mart as, as the first record. And now let's go ahead and go to my Azure database and look at the same table. And it looks like my Azure database, I lost my connection to it. So we'll do it again. And <laughs> I see the, the, the demons of the live demo came out. It looks like I, I lost my network connection, but uh, we've reestablished and we can now see that on the Azure side, I have um, the same table that I had on the vSAM. So they're now in sync. So now let's uh, do a change to our vSAM table. So I'm gonna go back to my vSAM table and I'm gonna uh, query it again. And we're gonna go ahead and, and play with the zip code. So the zip code was 98999, and we're gonna change it to 98321. So this has been changed in my vSAM. I'll go ahead and re-execute this query and we can see that it was indeed changed. And now I'm gonna go back to my Azure and we're gonna look at it and you'll notice it hasn't changed. And that is because this, uh, the data sync tool runs on a schedule. And so the changes won't get picked up until the next time it runs. So like I said before, we're not gonna wait for schedules to fire. I'm gonna run it manually, but I'm gonna select the customer's table and I'm gonna do a sync now. And this time I'm gonna do an automatic. And what automatic does is it actually goes out and it analyzes the source table and it determines if there've been any changes made. And if there have been changes made, then it will do an incremental sync and move just the changes over. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. So I'm gonna click okay. And it's analyzing uh, the source table and it, it determined that there was one update that was made. So now we go back to our Azure database and I rerun my query and you'll see that my zip code changed from 98322 or to 98321. So that's the um, extract and load capability of the tool, 
doing both full loads as well as incremental synchronizations. We also have an ETL component called our transform transformation component. And it will do um, everything from, you know, traditional ETL uh, things like uh, renaming columns, excluding columns, changing data types. Uh, maybe you're going to add a column uh, to the target that wasn't in the source. For example, you might want to drop a timestamp into your target that wasn't your source. Uh, traditional things like that. But what I want to show you is actually something that I think is very powerful, and that is transformations can also involve um, data virtualization. And that's what I want to show you right now. So I'm going to open up this transform that I've created called Cust Order. And instead of using a single table as my source, I've actually used that same virtualization query that we looked at before, where I'm actually joining my customers and my orders as my source. Uh, so it's a virtualized table to treat as my source that then I'm going to move to my uh, uh, cloud database in Azure. And then when I make a change in one of the, those two source tables, we'll see that that will get picked up and also moved. So let's go ahead and see how that works. So I'm going to cancel out of this and I'm going to run a sync now on it and a full reload again because we want to get them synchronized. And as before, this is going to drop and recreate the, the table on the target and it's moved now all of my records. And I called the table and the target, I called it cust ord. So we're gonna go up and we're gonna look at cust ord. And we'll see that as before, I've got my customer information as well as over on the left and my order information on the right. And you can see I've got my always open quick mark. And of course I have three records because within this virtual uh, virtualization view, I actually have two distinct order or two distinct order IDs 101 and 84 and within those I have three distinct product IDs and so it actually represents three tables for the always open quick mark so now let's make a change so I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at the vSAM customers table again and let's this time I'm going to change my zip code back to 98999 and so we've now changed that in the customers table. But as you remember, with the virtualized view, there's actually three records for always open quick mart in the target. And we're gonna come back and we're gonna look at the cust ord again to bring this up. And so we're still at 98321. And I'm gonna come now and I'm gonna do my sync now again. I'm gonna do an automatic. So now it's actually analyzing both of the source files. And it's looking to see if anything changed in either one of those files. It did determine that one record changed in the, in the customer file, but that actually affected three of the records in the virtualized table. And so we actually see three updates. And so if we come back to our Infonaut tool and rerun our query, we'll see for each of the three always open quick marts, we've put our zip code now back to 98999. So that's just a quick example of doing um, data movement for both the extract load as well as the uh, ETL side of things, um, doing full loads as well as change data capture. But I want to go back now. I've, I've been showing you the Infonaut query tool, which probably, you know, if, if any of you are familiar with it, probably very few of you would be familiar with it. And I want to actually show you how we can do um, data virtualization using uh, other tools on the market. And I'm going to use a tool that I'm sure everybody is familiar with, and that is Microsoft Excel. Now we have a, uh, a, a component in the Connects product called the um, Connects add-in for Excel. And when that's installed, the Excel menu, actually, we get a connects item up here. And if I select the connects, I get a, a, a ribbon menu and I have a, a couple buttons. One is to just use, if I have a connections already created, I can use an existing connection. I have a wizard to create new ones. We also have a data pane that incorporates the uh, functionality between these two buttons, plus gives you a more of a, a GUI uh, view of everything. So from here, I can actually see all the connections that I've already made. And I've got one that I'm going to show you. Earlier, I did an example of data virtualization where I virtualized 
across two different vSAM files and presented them as a uh, um, .NET data provider uh, um, result set. So this time using Microsoft Excel, we actually have an OLEDB connection from our desktop. But instead of virtualizing across two vSAM files, I'm going to actually virtualize across different platforms. So I want to virtualize between data that's on my mainframe and data that's in the cloud. So I'm going to use the same um, tables that we've been using, but my customer's uh, table is actually the vSAM file that's on the mainframe. And the orders table is that orders table that we that we populated earlier with the data sync tool and it's running in the cloud in the Azure SQL database. So I'm going to edit this connection so you can see how easy they are to create. And the only thing that we need to do is tell it what um, CDD we want to use. And so it's the same CDD that I've been using. I put in some credentials. Now, I have the option with this tool, I can just bring in a single table if I want, or like with the data sync tool, I can actually use a query as my source. And so in this case, and I'll open up in the query builder so you can visually see, um, it is actually the same query that I've been using. I've got the customers from ZOS, but my orders now is coming from the Azure. And so we're going to actually virtualize this data across these two platforms and bring them into Excel. And so I'm going to close this out. And once I have my connections made, all we have to do to bring them into Microsoft Excel is simply double click it. And the tool just went out and it got the records from the vSAM files running on the mainframe from the customers. It gathered up the orders information from the cloud. It joined them together and has presented them now to Microsoft Excel as if it were a single relational table. Microsoft Excel does not know anything about where this data came from. And this is a native Excel table. It has all the features and functionality that any other uh, um, Excel table would have. So with that, I'm going to turn the presentation back over to you, Harpel. Thanks, Bill. And that was great. <clears throat> so um, we'll just bring up that slide again. And so as Bill showed us today, we were able to do data access to the vSAM database on the mainframe as well as the Azure. In fact, on the right-hand side of the slide, you can see that we support over 150 different databases and platforms. On the left-hand side, the data movement tool or ETL and change data capture tool Bill used was a solution called DataSync. And that is our near real-time change data capture solution. We were visualizing data within Infinite, and we were also visualizing and virtualizing data within the Connects Excel add-on. So at this point, I'm gonna turn it back to Will for Q&A. And while he's assembling the questions, I would like to just point out that you can learn more about our products at softwareag.com mainframe integration or at connects.com. Will, I'm gonna turn it back to you for any questions that are in there. Yes, Harpal, thanks. Uh, still time to put your questions in, so if anybody does have them, please uh, put them in there now. We're going to start off with a quick one that says, can data sync do bidirectional replication of data between Salesforce and database, or at least one way? Yes, it can uh, one way. Um, in terms of bidirectional, we do not support going um, say from say table A is on your source and table B is on your target. We don't support those two tables being directly synced. You could use a staging table, go from A to B and C to D. Um, but in terms of one way, we definitely do. Yes. I see you use Azure in the demo. Do you support AWS? Yes. We support all major cloud platforms being Azure, Amazon's AWS, or Google Cloud. The next question, you are connecting to vSAM. Do you support others? Yes. So on the, um, in general, we support over 150 different databases. So on the mainframe, we support vSAM, QSAM, Adabase, IMS, DB2 as the major ones. And again, a number of other ones on other platforms. Can you access the vSAM data from a, J a Java application? 
Ah, great question. So yes, we have, um, uh, as I pointed out, our DB adapter provides standard connectivity mechanisms to ODBC, JDBC, .NET, and OLADB. So in this case, they could leverage the JDBC connection and at, connect to that job application. What visualization tools do you support? Uh, that's a very good question. There's uh, many different ones. So rather than list all the different tools that are out there, we saw Infinite, we saw Excel, really any tool that su um, supports all the standard connectivity mechanisms. And again, we provide standard connectivity for ODBC, JDBC, .NET, OLADB. So our um, Infinite tool was using a .NET data provider. Excel was using ODBC, oh, sorry, OLADB. My, my, my bad, and uh, yeah, any of those. So Tableau would be an ODBC connection and ClickTech the same and many of these other ones, but rather than list them all, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Very good. Um, hang on one second. To the questioner that's asking about a documentation link, uh, we will get you that documentation link later today. Um, another question I have, are, main, are mainframe flat files covered as a data source? Um, yes, we support uh, vSAM and QSAM, um, uh, PS files, um, yes, so we do support uh, mainframe flat files as our source. Okay, very good. Um, those are all of the questions, gentlemen, that we've received. Uh, so to everybody that is with us, thank you today. We are planning an extended series of webcasts this year, so we certainly invite you to follow the programming and you can register for these future programs by visiting the events section of the company tab at softwareag.com and that's located on the top right hand side of our homepage. So with that, gentlemen, thank you both very much for a very informative presentation today. Our program has now ended. Enjoy the rest of your day.